Welcome back to the class on Neuronal Dynamics. This is part two of week one. After the overview, we can now turn to the model of a passive membrane. In the previous lecture, we have already seen the case of an integrating fire model as an example of a simplified neuron model. In an integrating fire model, a pulse that comes in causes some response this response can be measured with an electrode. If several pulses come in, these pulses add up linearly. The responses add up linearly, and at some point in an integrated fire model, the potential hits the threshold and out goes a spike. If we talk about a passive membrane, we focus on the sub-threshold regime where everything is linear. And the simplest example of a model of a passive membrane is the model of a linear circuit, in particular an RC circuit. An RC circuit is called RC because it has a resistor R and a capacity C. Now suppose a pulse comes in. The pulse closes the lever for a very short moment of time so that a current pulse is delivered onto the RC circuit. As a result of this, the response of the potential U will be an exponentially decaying pulse. This is the impulse response function of the linear circuit, of the RC circuit. If several pulses come in, these linear responses are simply added. So far for pulse input, but we can also study this RC circuit for arbitrary time-dependent input, which will cause some kind of voltage response. The question then is, are we able to predict the voltage response for any arbitrary time-dependent input? And the answer is yes, because the RC circuit can be described mathematically by a linear differential equation, which I will derive now. Let's look now at our RC circuit and derive a mathematical equation in order to describe the properties of this circuit. So, our RC circuit it's called RC because it's characterized by a resistor R and a capacity C. To keep the treatment slightly more general, I also introduced here the sign of a battery. This is a battery with, with a voltage which I call U rest. If there is no current injected into the circuit, the voltage measured at this, across the circuit would be exactly U rest. U rest stands for resting voltage. Okay, now let's inject some current. The total current will split up into a part that goes onto the capacitor and a part that goes onto the resistor. Let's try to write this down. So the total current is conserved. So the resistive current and the capacitive current together must add up to the current that is injected. So what can we say about the capacitive current? Let us recall that the capacity is defined as charge over voltage. Let me move the voltage to the other side. So I have U times C equals Q. Now what is a current? A current is charge divided by unit of time. So I will look at DDTQ, the change of the charge on this capacitor, this will be exactly my 
charging current, my capacitive current IC, which I can now calculate as C times du dt. Let me plug this into the equation. So IC is C times du dt. What can I say about the resistor? Well, a resistor is defined by Ohm's law. The voltage is the resistance times the current. Now we have to be a little bit careful here. The current, with current I mean the current flowing through the resistor. And with voltage I mean the voltage across the resistor. But this is not the total voltage. The total voltage U is the battery voltage plus the voltage across the resistor. In other words, the voltage across the resistor is U minus U rest. So I can take the result for I, IR, the resistive current, is 1 over R U minus U rest. So this is the total current. Now it's convenient to move this to the left hand side but keep the sign so it's the same as moving moving this term here to the other side and but let me copy this, move this to the left hand side C times du dt equals minus 1 over R U minus U rest plus I of T. Sometimes the equation is written in a slightly different form. If we multiply both sides of the equation by R, by the value of the resistor, we get R times C U dt equals minus U minus U rest plus R times I of T. This is the final equation. Let's look at the units of this equation. This is voltage. So the equation on the right hand side has units of voltage. This is the battery voltage. R times I, look back at Ohm's law, is again units of voltage. So left hand side also has units of voltage. This part here is voltage divided by time. That means R times C together must have units of time. And this is why I introduce a shorthand notation tau or tau, the time constant of this differential equation. RC equal tau is the time constant of this RC circuit. And this is the equation we have here on the next slide. This is the equation I just derived. R is the resistor, C is the capacitor, but R times C is now summar summarized as the membrane time constant. You see that in this electrical diagram, the battery U rest is no longer there. Indeed, it's possible mathematically to make it disappear and have a simplified equation where I introduce a new variable V as U minus U rest. Again, let me show how this works. Mathematically, I set V equals u minus u rest. Now if I take the derivative of v, dv dt, this is du dt minus the derivative of u rest. But u rest is a constant parameter, so the derivative disappears. Therefore, I have dv dt equals du dt, or I can set here, tau 
EDTV is the same as the UDT, but the UDT is this equation. This equation has U minus U rest by definition. This is V plus R times I of T. So in the new variable, V, the battery voltage U rest has disappeared. To summarize, the passive membrane is described by a linear differential equation with which describes the evolution of a voltage, a potential battery voltage is included into the definition of this new variable V, which appears on both sides of the equation. Now, let's look at the type of solutions that this equation may have. Suppose for the moment that there is no input. So, this is gone. Another question is, what's the solution? Well, this is a linear differential equation with the time constant tau. Suppose that for some reason I start at a value v0. There's no further input. Some input may have brought me to v0, but now it's just freely evolving in the absence of any further input. The solution of such a linear differential equation is an exponential decay back with a time constant tau, which is exactly this membrane time constant, the time constant of the linear differential equation that I have introduced before. Quite generally, linear differential equations occur in many areas of science, of physics, of chemistry. A famous example is radioactive decay. Exponential decay is the solution of a one-dimensional differential equation. So quite often in this class, we will work along the triangle. On the top of the triangle, we have the experimentalist, which injects some current I of t into a neuron, and he might be able to record with a different electrode the voltage of the neuron, the potential, the membrane potential of the neuron. Now, we can try to predict the membrane potential by using an equivalent electrical circuit, the simplest case would be a circuit with just a resistor R and a capacity C, but we will see more complicated circuits later on in this class. Now, the circuit itself can be analyzed mathematically, and it's often possible to write down a differential equation that describes the properties of the circuit and ideally also the properties of the neuron. So in this first class, I just talked about the passive membrane and we went around the triangle for the case of the passive membrane. But in other lectures over the next weeks, we will consider more complicated models of a neuron, which leads to more complicated circuits, which leads to slightly more complicated differential equations. So if we want to understand the properties of a neuron, we can use arguments from electricity and we can use arguments for math. Let's see how this works. Let's look at pulse input. So for the moment, I use a, as input, I use a step current. The current is zero. At some time t0, t0, it switches to a new value. The question then is, how is the voltage of this RC circuit going to respond? Or equivalent, how is, equivalently, how is the differential equation to respond? Or, for us, in your science, how is the neuron going to respond to a step current input? The voltage in response to the step current input will be a constant at the battery voltage, U rest. It's just sitting there. Then at time T naught, it will not jump like the like the like the input current, but it will move to a new value. It will approach a new value, and the approach is again going to be exponential with time constant 
tau, the time constant of the differential equation. Now suppose I stop the stimulation after some time, say here, and we go back to zero. In this case, the voltage trajectory will be the same. The differential equation or the neuron or the circuit does not know that the input is about to change. But then when it changes, the two curves become different and it will return exponentially back to the resting value u rest. Now let's do the following. Let's consider a pulse which is shorter, it's half as long, but twice as high, like this. So the surface under the pulse is the same as before. Now what's the surface under the pulse? The surface under the pulse corresponds to the charge, the total charge delivered onto the circuit. Now with a, twice, with a pulse twice as high, the response will go up twice as fast, and then it stops here, and it returns exponentially to the resting value. Now imagine that I make the pulse even shorter, again, half as long as the red one, but twice as big. So it's now a really huge pulse in a very, very short amount of time. The rise is again much faster, and it will end here, and then I have, afterwards, I have exponential decay. So what you see is that if I make the pulse shorter and shorter while keeping the area under the pulse the same, which means while keeping the total charge deposited on the circuit the same, the voltage response always have, has the same amplitude. And in the limit that the pulse becomes very short, it's just a jump, a jump from the previous value to a new value. In the limit that the pulse becomes very, very short, I can say the, the total charge Q, which corresponds to the surface under the pulse, is deposited in a very, very, very short time. And this notion of a given charge deposited in a very short time is denoted by the so-called Dirac delta function. So, the Dirac delta function is a mathematical abstraction. It's a mathematical abstraction because no experimentalist is able to deposit a certain amount of charge in an infinitely short time. It's a mathematical abstraction. However, the mathematical abstraction makes sense because the jump is always to the same value, however short the pulse is, as long as it's short enough. So, this pulse, the delta function at time t0, t cannot really be drawn because the pulse should be very, very high and very short. That's impossible. So as such, the object, Dirac delta function, it's really an operator, does not make a lot of sense. However, it does make sense because we use this Dirac delta function in the differential equation which we need to integrate. And once you integrate over the current pulse, you get back the charge. Once you integrate over a Dirac delta function, you get very useful results. And one, one of the two parts of the definition is that if you integrate over the Dirac delta function from a value before t0 to after t0, then the integral is always normalized to 1. And the most more interesting property is that you integrate over a Dirac delta function together with some other function f, some arbitrary function f of t, then it just picks out the time point t0 as a result. Now with this, let me come to the end of this part. In this class, we will quite often walk around the triangle from experimental neuroscience to circuits to math, and the famous example is 
the Hodgkin Huxley model that we will see next week, or the integrated fire model that we will talk about this week. And uh, the first example has been the passive membrane. In order for you to get used to working with these kind of differential equations, please spend now 15 minutes on the following exercise. Some of you are used to work with these kind of linear differential equations, others uh, need to be reminded. So everybody, please try to get a solution of the following differential equation in the case of some current injection. And the current injections we consider are first a step current injection, a pulse current injection, and finally an arbitrary current injection. And in the context of this pulse current injection, I, I would like you to work through the situation that the surface of the pulse is always the same but the pulse becomes shorter and shorter. So please spend some time with the exercises before we continue with the lesson.